Hello everybody, hello and welcome to this video. Um, I wanted to take some time. So this is Benoit Guerville here. And um, for those who don't know me yet, I'm the co-founder and the art director of Raging Heroes and Heroes Infinite. So basically everything that you see uh, from us came from my twisted mind. Um, so like all those characters, uh, are, I, like my, I would say my creation, like the, all those ideas start from me. Um, and so today I wanted to take um, a little bit of time to look at all those cool entries uh, from the Mortenberg painting contest and um, tell you a little bit more about how we selected the winners and but mostly give you some tips to help you win because um, there's a lot of cool stuff here and uh, I think that you guys, uh, all of you, you want to have beautiful miniatures, you want to have uh, beautiful armies or a beautiful D&D campaign with nice scenery, nice characters um, and you probably like to share your painting jobs with your friends and you also, like a lot of us, uh, you're wondering, my God, those star painters, they, they paint so good. How can they make it so good? Like I will never be at this level. And of course, some of them spend most of their uh, free time or even their, their professional time painting. Um, but so they get better and better all the time. But what I want to share with you today is that there are many ways to make your miniature look better very simply. Uh, so I'm not going to talk a lot about painting, but I'm going to talk about some other stuff. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to congratulate you and thank you because like there is a lot of entries on that contest and, and frankly, a lot of them looks really good. It was a tough choice. As you will see, we're always as bad as uh, in, in, as before in selecting winners, we cannot settle for just one for each prize. So we had more prizes, which in a way is good for you. But um, yeah, there is a lot of quality stuff here and, and we were all very excited. So let me give you some pointers about how you can make your, your work look better. And maybe for this, we can look at this amazing image which is the, the one we selected as the big winner for this month. And the reason for that is that everything here is great. Of course, the painting is awesome. Like there's no question about that. But there is also a lot of other stuff that are great. Uh, the scenery is fantastic. Like the work put into that diorama, it's just awesome, mind blowing. Uh, the color scheme is awesome. Um, color scheme is like the most undervalued, underrated um, uh, concept in miniature painting. By choosing the right color, you can make your miniature look so much better. And usually people tend to choose too much colors. And this tend to make things more complicated for them and this tends to ruin the, 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 the job. So I, I won't go into details because what we plan to do in the coming month, uh, probably for this autumn, like we won't have the time to set that up for this summer, but our goal is to uh, create something uh, and I don't know in exactly you know, what, what shape, what form, but we want to create something to help you paint better, photograph better, um, print better, you know, all those things. We're working on that right now. We want to develop that program. And this is great to have those contests and to have so many of you participating because this is the perfect place for us to start getting ideas of, on how we could help you make better miniatures and better photos of them. So the, 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 color scheme here is very simple. Red, 
white. Metal colors, there's always, like nearly every time you will have metal colors, so gold and, and, and silver. But the gold here is, is more strong. But you see that's it. Red and white. This is super simple. Then you have a little bit of green here in the tentacles in the air that echoes what works on the diorama. And you see that on the diorama there is no color. There is only green. Don't try to put little flowers full of colors and stuff. No. This is the backdrop. What you want to show is the miniature. This is what is fantastic here. Um, the backdrop, look how it follows the composition of the shape of the miniature, like that, that big curve here is echoed there. And somehow this branch echoes the silhouettes of the miniature here. So very well done. And um, oh, uh, the, the, the only green echoes the only red of the miniature. This is brilliant. This is super simple, super well done in terms of color and super efficient. The other thing that is great about this picture is the photography. It's extremely well photographed. It is well lit and the camera is properly placed. It's nearly at eye level of the miniature and this is something that works all the time. Like when you photograph people in real life, you're not three meters above them. You're usually looking them in the eyes Sometimes you're looking at them from below, but rarely very much above, from above, you know. And this is a very, uh, this is something that happens very often. Photographing your miniature from a too high point of view is not good. If you look at the miniatures here, you'll see that most of them are photographed at eye level, and this is great. Um, in a miniature, in, in a setting like that, so this, this, for example, is a good example because there is a very cool idea, but there is, um, there is some technical issues with the photos. It's going to be very hard for you to photograph um, your miniatures uh, on focus here and having some stuff focus on the background because you have to take those photos with like a macro photography uh, lens setting, which means that everything around will be blurry. And also to shoot it from the top, it's harder to get uh, a most effective effect. However, the composition is really cool here. Like uh, this is working really well, that group of three cat women and this girl here, the composition works really well. That's also why I, I, I I like those contests because we all understand that this is not the best job, uh, the best paint job of the of the contest, but the photography is interesting. Now you could have a much better result by having a more either a more neutral background, so like only have white all around, or black, or or dark gray. And, and so you would have a better result for, for the overall feel of the shot if you had like an uniform background all around. And also you could have a light that is um, like if you had a black background, the light would not look so flat. The, the miniature would come out more on uh, in terms of contrast on it. So that's, that's also interesting. Like for example, see this one. The fact that it's on, on white tend to flatten everything. And uh, so if it was photograph, photographed on a darker background, it would already look better. Um, what else can I do? Uh, can I say? Um, like here, we have a light, nice little scene, but it's photographed with a flash and it's out of focus two things that you absolutely have to avoid. You're probably forced to photograph with a flash because you don't have enough light in the room you took the picture. And so the flash will flatten everything. It will kill most of the details of your paint job. Like absolutely never photograph with a flash. 
And then the other thing is that because of that, you have a problem um, um, making sure that your characters are in focus because when you could make the focus, there is no light because you need to have the flash, so you're in a dark environment, so it's very hard to make the focus. So those two things are important. And then if you were to lower your camera just a little bit more, you would have a better effect. As a rule of thumb, I would say that you always better to have the camera lower than higher. This will help you a lot. Okay, I hope I'm not boring you with all this. Um, I thought it, it could be really helpful. Okay, I, I, another example here. So same thing here. If you had like that, that backdrop here make sure to extend it to the bottom so you you could just uh, buy a, a black um a black uh, sheet of paper at your local art and craft uh, shop and use it as your background however be aware that photographing in on on full black or full white is never the best option. It's better if you have a dark gray or a dark blue, something like that, because of the way your um, camera measure light, you need you might end up having a lot of contrast problem trying to photograph on a, on a fully black background. Uh, okay, what else can I say uh, that could help you here? Well, here you have a perfect example. Like this is really interesting. Here you have the right background, but you don't have the right setting in the end. And probably because this background is black, and when your camera um, is on, on auto setting, it will always make that kind of color a, a, a neutral gray. So that is why your black is not coming black. So in that case, what you could do is go to Photoshop. And we are, oh, okay, what happened there? Okay, so you go in Photoshop, okay? You have your image here. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to crop the excess, like the, this photo is huge. Make us focus only on what's important. Crop it, no, go there, crop your photo. It's much pleasing to the eye to see it like that, okay? And then um, using a, 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 a Photoshop uh, setting tool. So what can I use that will be very easy here? Let me bring that here. Okay, I'm, I'm using the level tool here. You can see what it shows is that this is called an histogram, which it shows you the, the quantities of color in the scene, like how much black there is, how much white there is, and how much gray there is. And you see, as I told you, like there is a lot of gray because the background has been measured as gray. So if you were to do something like this, and like maybe like this, okay. You're going to be able to, to get a better a better setting for your image okay and to be honest i don't like the um uh this this tool which is called levels very much because you don't have so much um freedom to to set up your your uh, tones correctly, like you see right away here, I'm crushing, like I'm crushing everything, and all all cocktail gets lost. Uh, you have the curve tool that is better, but it's a little bit harder to understand. So what I would do here is something like this, like because when I'm doing this, I'm bringing a little bit more contrast, and. Okay, yeah, something like that, probably. Okay, so here the character pops a bit more. And then what I could do is add an additional layer in my image and just add a little bit of black. Oops, not so strong, please. Well, let's, let's put it like this, okay. 
So I'm 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 setting my Okay, this is called vignetting. You probably know about that from your photo apps on your telephone, on your phone. And um, vignetting is a super efficient uh, effect to bring focus on your, oops, on your, on your character, on your photos. Okay, so here I'm, I'm doing a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop playing with this because when I start I can I can really dig into this and, and be a bit long. But you see the big difference is now you're having focus and a lot of the things that you do in miniature painting is about focus. Uh, oh okay, I had I had let that on. I didn't realize that. Okay, that's why I, I had problem with my curve. Okay, I was a bit surprised. So Okay, so something like that, you have, you have an image that stands out more than uh, in the original version. And those, those little changes are not very complicated. You are, if you don't have Photoshop, you have apps on your phone that are perfect to do that. And probably your phone is a very good tool to take photos and correct them after a while, okay? Personally, I use Snapseed, Snap, Seed, which is a Google app uh, for photo retouching, and it's really great. Okay, so um, let's go back to this. So you see the difference? Amazing. Okay, we are much more focused on the character. The, the, the colors are popping more. It's, it's a lot of cool stuff happening. Okay. Um, now, um, this one, this one is really good, but the photo was taken without enough light. And this is really sad because the paint job is just amazing. Uh, but I can tell you that because I see all the grain in the photo, which means that there is not enough light when it was taken. So if you're really interested in, in doing better photos, there's tons of um, videos on YouTube that tells you what type of light to use for that. But basically you could take a table lamp, add some, um, um, uh, oh God, uh, I don't know the word in English, like that paper you use to uh, swipe surfaces, you know, like uh, that absorbing paper. Uh, you could put that in front of your light, be sure that it's a LED light so that it doesn't go hot. You can use this, it's going to make your light very soft. You, you put that sheet in front of the light and you, you light your character with that. This is the most basic light setup you can do. And then you can look for stuff like ring lights or um, uh, like, for example, the ring light is this. Uh, you know, like influencers use that all the time. Uh, it makes a very nice light and it can be very good for your miniatures. Uh, and there are tons of little, uh, um, there are tons of little things like that, little accessories. You don't have to go expensive. Uh, you can take something like this, for example. This, is, this could be great or something like that. Um, and you see here, this is really not expensive. I, I don't say that it is great. I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. But having a little source of light like this and use it to light your miniature will make a massive difference. Okay, what else? Uh, what else can be said? There's tons of stuff to be said like that. Oh, okay. Really interesting thing here, those two images. Uh, we have this one that is a beautiful paint job, but it's very hard to read because uh, same thing, taken with not enough light. And since it's very dark, it would have probably worked better with a light that is not so even, a light that, that, um, that makes the details pop. To do that, you want you want to light with a side light 
that will create some shadows and highlights on your miniature. Exactly like when you're painting, you're creating highlights and shadows, you want to use a light that will en enhance that. So here we have a very soft light that makes everything look even, which is usually great to photograph miniature. It's exactly what I told you about those lights here. But for that kind of image here, having a little bit more strength on one side than on the other of the miniature would have made a big difference. However, here we have exactly the opposite. We have a miniature that is not painted. There is only one light that is included at the base and it lights everything up. And so there is a lot you can see, like look at those, those ridges here and how you have shadows behind. It makes all the details pop. This is what I'm talking about. Oops. This is, I, I love this photo, honestly. Uh, this is a very smart move because no painting, but great lighting, great staging, great photographing. And I'm not sure, but probably it was like, you see, like all the background was removed. Uh, like this person took the time to go and remove everything in the background to just put it on, on plain black. And so it pops like crazy. It wouldn't work for every miniature, but here it's working really well. So uh, that's, that's a very cool thing to do. Uh, another paint job here that seems to be pretty good on some of the parts of it. Uh, but the lighting is ruining it and also the lens is not clean. Like if you have that kind of halo, you can be sure that your lens is not clean. So uh, make sure you don't put your miniature right against the backdrop. Um, this is never a, a good. Like push your backdrop behind as much as you can. Make sure your lens is clean. And um, because here, like the, 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 the dirty lens make a, a, some kind of halo effect. Uh, not blurry, but you know, like there is this light halo around everything. And it's, it's really taking away from the quality of the shot. Okay, what else? Uh, I could go on like that for a long time. So I'm going to probably stop there. We're going to just take a look. Like there is a lot of cool stuff. Like this is looking beautiful. This is looking great too. Uh, a lot of stuff that we have not selected. This one too is really cool. Uh, I mean, like there is so much cool stuff. Uh, and you know, those, those big um, toads uh, are really nice. The dragon toad. It's always hard to select stuff. This is, this is our selection. These are the main winners. First place, second place, and third place. Uh, they all have their qualities and their, and their weakness. Um, like this, this one here is just fantastic in terms of the scenery that has been built around it. I saw uh, a, a post on Facebook about how this was built. This is really awesome, uh, fantastic job. The scenery is just amazing. The, the old diorama thing is fantastic. And here we have the same character who is more simply done because there is no, not all that uh, scenery around it, but the painting level is, is superior to this one. So, you know, it's always hard to balance those things. So anyway, um, here we have our first place, second place, third place, same thing. It was hard to, it was hard to really choose and, and, and put them next to one another because once again, a lot of very cool stuff. Uh, this girl here would have benefited from a, a cleaner background. Like having a clean background makes a huge impact. Um, whether it's black or something else, it has a huge impact. So, um, this is something to, to think about, but uh, like, this is like really cool. Look at this face. The face is fantastic. And the color scheme is great. The, the little scenery is great. Like everything is great. And here we have a totally different approach 
which is fantastic too, with the, 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 the light shining on the character. It's so well done. So you guys have really like done a fantastic job this month. And then we took those two as like special winners. So this one, I already explained why. I love the concept of this image. Uh, it's really well done. It fits the character perfectly. The use of the scenery is so smart. And then this one, because like this is the biggest undertaking, I think, if I'm correct, for that release. Like there is scenery painted, there is this whole group of character. Now it could have been so much better by laying out the composition a little bit better. So one rule that you want to apply all the time, you don't want things to be um, layered on top of one another. That's something that you have to avoid at all costs because it really becomes very messy visually very quickly. Unless I'm very close here and somehow the, these big tentacle things be, become abstract in the background and like disappear and becomes nothing else than the background. When I zoom out, those characters get lost and we only see the tentacles. And it's, it's so, so sad because they, you know, they are key character of that shot. So this is also something you want to take care about. So here, for example, having the two pieces of scenery framing the shot, probably placing the, the, the main character higher on something to create some kind of uh, stronger composition than just having them all laid out like this, this would have helped. But anyway, this, this was a big under, undertaking. There were a, cool of, a, a lot of cool stuff. I really like the color scheme. I think the color scheme is very smart. So yeah, we thought, okay, this one is also something. And also we don't want to always um, um, make the absolute best painting job win because like at one point it might become that it's always the same people who are winning, which is not the goal. Like we want all of you to become better and, and progress and make better uh, entries. So that's why I'm recording that video today. I hope it's helping you one way or another. There's a lot of info in what I'm telling you here. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's too much, but that's okay. We'll get back into each of those topics on more um, specific, more targeted videos um, for each subject to make sure that you, you get the most out of your um, Heroes Infinite subscription and that as well as printing great miniature, you learn to make them look even better. So that's it for today. Once again, fantastic job to all of you guys. Um, all of you who participated in, in that contest because really like it's not easy to paint those miniature, like print them, pen them in time for the contest. This is already in itself a big accomplishment. So some of you may feel like, oh, I'm not the best painter in the world. Some, somehow we don't care, like have fun with it, share it. You have to start from somewhere and this is the only way you'll get better. And, um, and it's just plain cool, okay? Have fun with your miniature, have fun printing and painting and see you soon. Bye-bye.